How you doing? Hey, what's good, man? We just got done with the tour. Yeah, man, it was a crazy tour. How you feeling about it? Pretty good, dude. Pretty. Good. I think the last show was definitely my favorite. Uh, had fun with. Uh, we we're performing for all these soldiers and airmen and service members, and so. Yeah, the last one was my favorite because they were the, they were the most rowdy and they <laughs> they were they were ready for it. I got I got a tip uh, I got a tip of a Magnum condom. Yeah, that was crazy, bro. Yeah, <laughs> dude, people just put the Magnum Magnum condom. I'm like, where did it get this from? <laughs> dude just slid it in my hand. <laughs> Yo, he slid in your hand and smiled. He was like, "Hey, look, I only accept euros. <laughs> only accept dollars." Hey, I said I accept high fives or whatever you want. I said whatever you want to pay me, so I set myself up for for that. <laughs> so apparently, I get Magnum condoms now. I'm probably gonna get a, like a dental dam next time. Next oh, show or you know, <laughs> if you get a dental dam somewhere in the middle of a base in Europe, that would be like, all right, you guys are struggling. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> you guys need help. What a disrespectful thing a dental dam is, man. Yeah, dental dam. I've never is, even seen one of those in the wild. Yeah, you know what? I only saw it. In sex ed, never in real life. I've heard him reference it. I'm like, who the fuck is going to whip out like a deflated balloon right before they go down? Just, <laughs> like, just <laughs> all right. All right. Just stay calm. You know, keep yourself, keep yourself warm. I'll be there. I'd sooner use like the, some saran wrap or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and like, think about it. Imagine the girl herself. Like, if you bring that out, she's going to be like, oh, what do you think I am? Yeah. You'd be like, no, I, I know. It's not about you. It's about me being a safe individual. You know, yeah. like. Oh, safety is not sexy. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, that's straight disrespectful. Very disrespectful. <laughs> so, if you could tell the people a little bit about yourself, you know what you do, you know, you, you yeah. know who you are. <clears throat> yeah, my name is John McCombs. I'm a comedian out of Chicago. Um, been doing comedy 13 years now. Um, I perform all over the world. You know, right now we're in Germany. So, um, I'm about to go on tour in a few weeks here. Um, touring all around Europe, uh, over 20 different countries. So, um, yeah, it's called the Laughing Passport Comedy Tour. Also, am a Marine Corps veteran. So we were doing this this base tour that you got to be a part of, um, and with another uh, uh, Mickey Bird who's out there. Yeah, <laughs> she's doing herself. her thing. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, uh, that's that's me mostly me in a nutshell like in a few words there yeah i mean sure there's a lot to you i, I know we talked about a little bit that you have yeah. went to a lot of different countries in europe and eastern europe is your favorite part of europe mm -hmm. not favorite part but that's your mostly hit up spot that you go to yeah yeah and um i think we talked about you was at one point this is when you was in the marine corps you stationed in romania yeah yeah my first uh deployment was to romania so that was the first place. That was the first country I visited outside of the United States. So that was like, <laughs> it's an interesting spot because like initially you're just on the base and when you're on base, it looks like any other place in the U S and you get off base and then you're like, Oh no, I'm in another country because <laughs> we're in this like little small village and you will see like a, just a horse carriage come by like some dude some farmer with a bunch of hay in the back of his carriage and then the next thing that comes by is a ferrari so you're what? like what is what where are we right now like, that's what? crazy it's like you back in time but almost in the future a little bit you know yeah yeah that's what like so how was it you being out there in romania uh romania was interesting romania was a good time i mean it's like you know a lot of people if you think of like romania you think of like transylvania you think of like dracula and shit like that right like, but um, Romania is just a, it's just an interesting place because it's, I mean, it's got like the Soviet influences and whatnot. So you mm. still have that. Um, they're very like moving towards like more Western stuff, but you still have like, it, it's like this wrestling between this like old world shit and then that's like, you know, trying to get in the 21st century. And I remember like me being black out there. I remember this one story. Um, I was standing in line at a gas station, like, you know, getting buying some food. Mm -hmm. And uh, apparently uh, there's this woman, these two women behind me. And this Romanian woman comes up behind me, smells me, then looks at her friend and gives her a thumbs up. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? An yeah. older Romanian lady sniffed you. Yeah. Where she sniffed you? Under your arms and your back? Like I, I don't know exactly. Cause like this ass? is what another Marine told me is what happened. And so I'm like, what is uh, this whole time? I was like, what does that mean? Like, was she like, oh my god, they do smell like cocoa butter? My god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they smell like the tropics. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, I guess, you know, Romania is very far from the tropics. So, <laughs> you know, the closest thing to tropical. Legit, but, hey, man, legit, though, that Romania is on the Black Sea, so they do have a beach. Um, and so when I was out there, like, you know, I got out there in August. So we would head up. We would hit up the beach, you know. We'd try to get in. You know, the beach was still open. And I remember the first one of the first times going to the beach. And I'm just standing by the water, and I, I, I catch these two little Romanian girls taking photos of me, <laughs> being like, hey, you know, and, and, and I called them out on it, and they just right. started laughing, you know, they started laughing. Oh, wow. So they didn't even try to hide or run away. They're just like, ah, ha, ha, you know. Yeah, no. Still they, with the I camera mean, in their hand, just looking at you, smiling, laughing, or checking them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is wild. So. Romania, you've been there. Mm-hmm. Um, this other countries, I mean, you even yeah. even after Marine Corps, you've been traveling, but like you stationed out there for a minute. Yeah, so I did six months in Romania. Um, uh, while I was out there, I also visited Bulgaria, also visited Serbia. Um, Serbia is wild as well too. That's the wildest place I've been, I think. Really? Why so? <laughs> I'm gonna get into it. All right. All right, yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, we just got off a tour, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so legit. So the first time I went to Serbia, I was with, um, it was a part of a training exercise when I was out there, all right? Mm-hmm. So we're like doing all this training with them and all these other um, countries. So it's like Croatia, Romania, Bulgaria, you know, they're sitting in like, you know, representatives to train with us. Oh, wow. So we're on this, we're on this base and the whole time, like, we're paying for all this shit, by the way. Keep that right. in mind. So, um, we get there and they feed us. We, we're, feed, we're eating sh- shit, man. Like we're not like the rations are are nothing. And so wow. they open up their little like bodega on the on the <laughs> in, on the base. Yeah. And they're like literally the first thing they tell us is like please uh, stimulate our economy and uh, buy things from our you know our local shop. And like so we're like getting mostly bread in our diet for like. You know, there are two weeks that are out there. We wow. paid them like what fifty thousand dollars for food. I swear to God, we only saw like five thousand of that. Are you that serious? Money. Oh man, some dude got rich off of that deal. So like we Damn. would, yeah, we would go and buy these burgers at the the uh, the, the little bodega joint. This dude who doesn't speak any English, he just knows cheeseburger. Like that's it. <laughs> you saw American <laughs> equals cheeseburger. Like, cheeseburger? You want a chicken sandwich? <laughs> no, three words: cheeseburger, chicken sandwich. You like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> just put them, just put it in the bag. <laughs> yeah, dude. But um, that was even the craziest part. I remember um when we were so we were doing all these different types of training and shit like that. Mm-hmm. So if y'all don't know, if you don't know like the history of, like Serbia mm-hmm. and like NATO, I mean like look nineties was a crazy ass time. We ended up bombing them. All right. So like there's some like you watch like uh, what was the movie uh, Behind Enemy Lines, that movie with Owen Wilson, like it's that shit, you know? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> we're doing this training with them. So like we the Marines and the uh, who's it, the Croatians are running the training. All right. Mm-hmm. So like during the training, we're acting in different scenarios. So the Marines are like role playing. All mm-hmm. right. So one of the role playing we do is a. Uh, uh, we give them the mission of like, okay, you got to go into this village and get this high value target, dude. You know, mm-hmm. so you got to try to assess out like, okay, like who's friendly, who's not. And so right. everybody else is going through it and like doing it how they're supposed to do, you know, like you don't just, you just go through when you're like, okay, they're cool. They're not, you know. Mm-hmm. And so it's a Serbian's time to go through. And these dudes, they just waste everybody. They just... <laughs> What the f- so so we're, we're, it's all with blanks, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so we're not firing real bullets, but like the first person they they see, they're just like pop 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 pop, and just like all right, I guess I'm dead, you know? Like it just lays down, it's just, it's just kill That's- everybody. <laughs> <laughs> what did they say after? What is like, hey, uh- hey, we got the guy. They're like, we were supposed to kill one person in this village. We got him. <laughs> <laughs> they took it too literal. It was like, yeah, but what about the For other real? villagers? It's like, well, then they didn't matter. You and know? I got Unfortunately. one other quick story about that, if you mm-hmm. let me. Um, so we had another, uh, um, we had another example where, um, like, they're guarding a patrol base, right? Mm-hmm. And so there's supposed to be like protesters outside this base. So it's all these the Marines are acting as role playing as the protesters, so right. like throwing rocks and like yelling and shit like that. Oh, sure. And so one dude, uh, one of the Marines. Uh, grabs a rifle and you know pops off a few blanks at him so they return fire and the dude acts like he gets shot in the leg so you know 
they send out two guys to go and you know grab up grab this dude so they pick him up they run him back into the base and we take him they take him out of sight we just hear pop pop and we see the two guys run back <laughs> and me and this other dude we this other marine were looking at each other like what the fuck and they saw us looking at them they're like uh, he had a knife <laughs> Like y'all, y'all don't play, man. Like, oh my god, that is crazy. It's like, I mean, for two weeks, y'all probably just like, yo, what? Like, other, yeah, like, people matter. Like, yes, <laughs> just because there's a one, you know, target there doesn't mean everyone's like that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, they all they do it different. <sighs> so during the time you was in the Marines, like, I mean, was there any point where you did comedy? Because I did, my, did hilarious stuff. Well, not you know hilarious, but let's just say shocking <laughs> things. Uh, sh- shocking things have happened that I'm assuming probably would have started comedy soon within the Marine Corps. Yeah, um, I was actually doing comedy before I went in the Marine Corps. So, oh, okay. Yeah, I started when I was in college, and then I was in ROTC during college. So like when I graduated, then I became an officer. Mm. So. Um, yeah, I was still doing it when I was in the Marines. I wasn't obviously doing it as much as I could um, or, you know, as much as I wanted to because I was stationed out in Jacksonville, North Carolina, uh, and, you know, there's not a whole lot of comedy going on there. Um, I had, The nearest comedy club was an hour away, so mm-hmm. that's – and had, like, one open mic, you know, a mm-hmm. week, and, you know, I was down there. I was trying to do it as much as possible, but, like, when I was deployed, um, you know, I did – I actually, like, organized – talent show and i would host it so i had an excuse to like do comedy oh you know bro um so i did that in uh in romania and i would like roast the staff and stuff so yeah (laughs) how was that i mean it was american yeah uh, people in romania okay yeah 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 yeah. and it was fun i know i had a good time because like at that point that was when we were uh pulling out of afghanistan like like the kind of like the our our main forces you know we were drawing down just back in like 20 2015 yeah 2015 Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we had a, we were the main hub for people coming back from Afghanistan. So we actually had people who were just waiting to get back to the United States and they would come and to like the uh, the what we call the MWR, the Morale, Welfare and Recreation yeah. building. And so they would just sit down and like watch us do this talent show. And so I had like a full room and I'm just roasting the staff and like these dudes are loving it, too. And I know they loved it because the next day I was at the barber shop and I was sitting next to two dudes, and they, they didn't know I was there. They were like, "Yo, man, that that comedy show was pretty good, man. That that was legit." I was like, "Oh shit!" Oh, bro, <laughs> that must have been dope. Like to just, I mean, do you think that prepared you to do comedy with regular people? Because just imagine they coming from like actual like yeah. combat, and then then they come into a comedy show. Like, did that prepare you for some of the comedy you've done, like in civilian life? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, it gave me skills for sure of, like, winning people over and, like, going into, like, an environment where you're like, yo, this might be a hostile environment, you know what I mean? So um, I definitely think it did prepare me in that regard because I've done shows where it's like, hey, you know, you get a rowdy audience. How do you wrangle in a, row- a rowdy audience? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, like I did shows out in town where I was stationed when I was in uh, North Carolina where I was opening for this other um, uh, Marine uh he's like a he was like a he was coming through doing a like a book tour thing but he mm-hmm. also like was doing his one man show and these guys don't know me they're like hey you here you all ready for Donnie O'Malley and they're like yeah look at yeah. those drunk ass marines and they're like all right well first off we're going to have this other guy he's pretty funny too <laughs> Oh, they brought you up <laughs> you know, in the worst way. Yeah. Oh, they bro. get them all riled up, and then they have to bring me on. But it's but they were cool about it, you know, because right. and so I just like you know I won them over, and so like I know I, I'm like okay if I can make a room of 150 to 200 drunk ass Marines shut the fuck up and listen to me and laugh, mm-hmm. yeah, well, I can do any room, man. Bro, so. Okay, so you was, an, you was an officer. Did you ever try to pull rank to get laughs? Nah, man. <laughs> I never brought that shit up when I was on stage. Not ever, man. You know? <laughs> and was, honestly, when I was doing the talent show, when I was p- pitching the idea of the talent show, like, because I had to get the command to sign off on it and say it's okay. Like, they wanted, what was it? They wanted to, like, approve my jokes. So they're like, okay, we're going to sign these three uh, uh, senior guys to listen to you do stand up, and they're gonna like report back. So I'm in like a classroom doing stand up for three guys, and I'm making them laugh. They're laughing. They're like, 
You know you can't do that, right? <laughs> oh, bro. What the fuck? You serious? What? Man. Yeah. That would have pissed me off. You got to be... <laughs> They're laughing at you jokes. Be like, hey, this funny one that you're like relying on, your closer, you can't use it. Yeah, you're like, you, all right, you well, what do you want me to one. do? Like, you know, have a. You can't have you like pantomime and jerking off on stage. Come on now. <laughs> you can't. Well, how rowdy the the whole Marine Corps, everything. You couldn't even do those type of jokes. All right, what, what were some of the top like, taboo things that you couldn't do, like joke wise, when using the Marines? Um, Taboo things? I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to remember what is like really taboo. I mean, probably like talking about drugs. I'm tired of talking about sex, like like hardcore like sex stuff. Like you could be, you, I mean, it's kind of like if you were preparing like a late night set. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't like you can talk around some shit, but you can't like say it, say it. You know what I mean? Mm, okay. Yeah. So like you just had to be a little more creative with how you talked about some things. So it's like okay, well, yeah, that's fine. Oh wow. Okay, so that's interesting because I don't know when you think of army, like I, I assume it'd be like political stuff because we you know we just did like the tour of the yeah. army base and that was something where i was kind of i was kind of watching you a little bit because you know you've been in the marine corps and stuff and what you was joking about i'm like all right let me watch him because i don't know yeah. i don't want to trigger somebody ptsd <laughs> and then they rush me on stage on some will smith you know yeah. chris Tucker shit. And i'm like oh shit you know chris, i mean chris rock shit but uh do you find that with some of your stand-up stuff now that like your marine like i don't know Things that you shouldn't talk about affects you, or do you like? Do you, like, I don't no, know, man. I, I feel like more li- like I have a voice to talk about that shit now, especially you know being a civilian now. Excuse me, um, because now I can talk about those things, and also the fact that like, you know, when we did the show today, I mean, I can make jokes now that I couldn't. I couldn't make jokes about back then, like <laughs> be it taking yeah. an edible before getting on the airplane or something like that, or right. like so, yeah, yeah, some yeah. shit like that. But I can make that joke now, and like people will laugh at it. People, will like, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I just think like, and, and I will say having that background of being in the military does like give me buy in with certain audiences, especially if I'm doing a show in a very like like a red area, like a conservative MAGA Trump area, you know, Ooh. I lead with that Marine shit and they're on board. They're like, Oh, yeah, so you got the Marine he, pass. Yeah. He's just fucking thank you for your service. He was one of the troops. So he's one of the good ones, fella. I told you, I looked this motherfucker in the house. Like I like this man. I don't know. I don't know what his deal is. He, you know, he come up here talking some bullshit, but you know, <laughs> he, he has one or two gay jokes. I don't approve of, but, <laughs> But that's what I get them with the gay jokes too, man. Because like, do because I remember like with that joke particularly mm-hmm. when I had I I, I I pull it back and say, okay, this is a part of the joke where I see the dude start to pull back and cross the wrong. That's just that hilarious. Because uh, yeah, I'm like I gotta call it out because right. that's the only way to get them to like, okay, okay, you know, get them uh-huh. to realize what they're doing and like, yo, just relax, man. Just realize this is we're jokes. We're just jokes right, right now. And on top of it, like if you, I feel like you being a marine too, like especially. In the position you was like a, mm-hmm. you know a former active marine uh that you know also too that adds like an extra t- masculinity in it to where it buffers like the whole gay joke or something <laughs> to our conservative dude right and you're like you know you, you you know that's like the toughest of the tough in american eyes you know so like yeah you say that joke they'll be like all right well i mean this motherfucker, you know well that's what i try to do be like multi-layered with it you know like how i ended my set was talking about how you shouldn't be a hundred percent one thing no one should be just one thing we're all many different things, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, like, to say you're just a Marine, you're just a man, you're just this thing. I'm like, no, you got different shades and, you know, levels because we all are ready to put each other into boxes to define who we are. But it's like nobody fits in just one fucking box. And if you do, you kind of suck as a human being, I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, definitely true, man. There's so many things going on in the world that, like, if you only just put in one box, it's like, what are you really doing out here? Yeah. You know? <laughs> so I'm curious um, that – when you out here in Europe, you know, because with Europe sometimes in certain countries they have like different views on like Americans and stuff. And mm-hmm. then like you being in the military, that's like a different level. Like, have you ever got like any type of like, I don't know, weird experiences with anybody from Europe knowing that you was in like the service? Okay. Uh, the only story I could think of um, is when I was like, I did it. <laughs> I think I told you this one when I went out to Moldova. And a small dove is a small ass country in in Europe. It's next to Roma- it's between Romania and Ukraine. All right, mm-hmm. so it's it's actually the poorest country in Europe. 
So I went to the Capitol there to do a show. The Capitol is called Kish now. Mm-hmm. And so I did the show out there. And the show was put together. It was kind of organized by this American who lives out there. And so this dude has had, like, run-ins with their, like, security services who are, like, a, you know, they're basically a modern-day version of, like, the KGB dudes. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, because <laughs> he's been locked up by them several times, you know, just because they're just fucking with him, yeah. trying to get him to leave the country. So, you know, I do this show. That dude's there. After the show, you know, I'm doing the after show stuff, talking to people, you know, shaking hands, whatever. And so uh, after these two guys get done talking to me, I'm thinking nothing of it. And the dude comes up to me and he's like, uh, the, the American dude comes up to me and he's like, hey, you know, those were like KGB agents, right? Like they were trying to like they're like trying to figure out why you were here. I'm like, what? Like, yeah, they were gathering intel on you. I'm like, for real, man? They, I thought they were just like regular ass dudes. It's like, nah, man. I know these motherfuckers. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, bro. So what did you do? Nothing. I mean, I what mean, could you do, right? Yeah, exactly. I'm like, well, I they now they know I'm here. I'm telling jokes. I'm a comedian. They saw my show. So I'm not trying to rally people up and rise up against Putin or whoever the fuck. I'm just here having a good time. Damn, you couldn't bomb at that show, couldn't you? Damn, you had to be funny as hell. <laughs> that was the worst. That was the you, know, you know what? Fuck this country. Fuck your government. Yeah. We should burn this motherfucker down. Bro. They, they would have they would have hit me with a chloroform rag real quick. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you, you drinking your beer. They just yeah. got you right mid-beer. Yeah, throw me in the back of a van with a fucking bag over my head. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's a show you had to kill at, bro. If you was bombing, they'd be like, no, this dude is not funny enough to be a fucking comedian. He's a real agent. <laughs> they would have tell you, you had, you had to do a good job at that show in order for you to live. man. I'd be right next to Brittany Griner in the fucking cell. <laughs> just like, <laughs> what you were pa- here for? <laughs> Y'all would have been passing a blunt together. They'd be like, yeah, be like, we don't care. You smoke. We just want the other guy. Yeah. Just smoke whatever we want. <laughs> That's what you guys do anyway. Be getting out, be like, oh, no, 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 take me with you. Take me with you. What are you doing? Come on now. I watch the WNBA. Come on now. <laughs> Yo, son, that would have been a weird trade. I'm going to trade you this uh, comedian that uh, is half an agent. <laughs> Like, or yeah, that's a no. Like, like, how what you're worth? You're like, okay, how many, how many arms dealers am I worth? Right, right. <laughs> bro. Imagine, imagine if they traded you for some top like official dude that was locked up in America, some Russian official, and they trade you for it, bro. You can use that as a credit. Hell yeah. You be like, hey, I'm that guy who was traded for that, uh, <laughs> that war criminal, <laughs> a Russian war criminal. <laughs> Put me on your stage. This dude tortured thirty families, cut off their fingers and their toes, you know, and they yeah. traded them for me. All right. <laughs> Let's welcome to stage. You may see them in a Russian in jail that he yeah. got traded on a, a trade plea deal like my fee's about to go up i'm like hey i'm worth i'm worth at least 30 sets of toes and fingers you know <laughs> like, <laughs> how much is a toe to you <laughs> it got at least be like five to ten thousand <laughs> yo you be national tour <laughs> hey that's that guy who got traded for that uh war crime. <laughs> bro oh you should have prayed they should have kidnapped yeah. your ass i should yeah I'm oh man per- you I would have been talk. I've been talking shit to like NFL players and shit. Oh, you got traded for for a second round pick, huh? <laughs> that's what that's what you got a second round pick. <laughs> yeah, right. They're like, yeah, man. I guess you got a point. Yo, John would have had a Netflix special already. <laughs> <laughs> and people couldn't even hate about. Yeah, well, he been through a lot, man. You know, I mean, it's a toes that matters, right? I even heard it was a big toad included. <laughs> Right. Oh man, just some pinkies. You got some pinkies. Yeah, but oh, you know, somebody gonna be a hater in the comments. Yeah. Like it was only like two pinky yeah. toes. Like, it don't even really needs a pinky, you know? Yeah, right. You still walk, right? You might hop on the left side and right side a little bit. You might look like a hobbit. Just <laughs> it was just left fingers, and left left toes. <laughs> just left toes. You leaning on the left a little bit. I'm like wow, he got a lot of swag. Too much swag. I think he's missing some toes. <laughs> Oh shit, yo! My man almost got kidnapped over comedy, yo. That's crazy, yo. Wow, black man in Moldova. That's what happens. Wow. I mean, of course, with the military stuff, yeah, that adds to it. Mm. So you also have toured a lot around Europe too. Like that's something we were talking about. And um, yeah, how many countries have you toured? And you, you would say, um, I have performed comedy in was it? I think thirteen or fourteen countries at this point. Wow, man. Yeah, and that's. That, that's also like headlining 
Okay, man, Ted, yeah. talk that shit, bro. Okay, yeah. and yeah. what what has been your favorite country to headline it? Estonia. Hmm? Estonia. Okay, this is interesting. Yeah, Coming from a black person, <laughs> and I'm a black person went to Estonia, so this yep. is very interesting. Yep. Why is Estonia your favorite place to headline? Estonia, I love Estonia. First off, it was the first place I ever went of my own accord mm-hmm. outside of uh, once I got out of the military. So it was the first like country I visited outside of America that I wasn't like told to go there. Wow. Um, and uh, yeah, so when I go out there when I perform, like you you've been there, you've seen their scene. Like they have yeah. a good scene. They have like a strong scene, and like people show up ready to pay attention and laugh. Yeah. You don't see like the bullshit with people like on their phones or, or, or heckling anything like that. They're here. They're there for a performance. And also they have a very high level of like English proficiency. Mm-hmm. So like the shows out there, like people actually will get your references. They'll understand. You will not have to slow down too much or change a whole lot. Um, and just in general, like every time I've been there, I've had a great time. The show's been good. They've mm-hmm. been packed or so almost sold out. Um, so yeah, I think like in general, just the comedy scene out there, the shows are really well put together. Um, and I've really had just like nothing but great experiences. Wow, man. That's and you perform in Thailand and uh Tar- and Tartu or Yeah, Tartu and Thailand. Yeah. Ah, Tartu and Thailand. Okay. Yeah, cuz I yeah, I perform in Thailand and that's a very advanced place for such a cause, you know, you think of Estonia from the outside, you think of like post-Soviet X, Y, and Z, but mm-hmm. you go there, a lot of tech there. They have the like, self-driving yep. like delivery cars and stuff. They got like, you know, so much tech involved. And you and I guess you've been there. Well, when was the first time you went there, actually? Like, was back in when? Yeah, first time I went there was in the uh, summer of 2017. Okay, so, right. so that was like a little two months after I got out of the Marine Corps. That was the first place I, I visited was Tallinn. Wow, man. So that was before pandemic. So that was Oh, been, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you probably <laughs> had a very good time, man. And then, yeah, and then uh, you know, I shot my special there um, uh, in 2021. End of 2021, I shot my special there. Mm, how was that? Yeah, that was good. That was a good time. And, uh, I feel like I, I, I made it particularly hard on myself because I was like, you know, I want to do it different. Like everybody is shooting, you know, recording albums or whatever in their hometown. I invite all, all their friends and family and all this shit, pad the audience, who gives a shit. Mm-hmm. But for me, I'm like, no, nah, man, I'm going to go out to Tallinn. I'm going to shoot it there. With people who are notoriously hard to make laugh. Jesus, bro, you I, really, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I want to earn the, I want to earn the laughs, and I feel like I, I, you know, I did, uh, I did a good job out there, and I, I really enjoyed it, you know. So, um, and it's like it's, some, it's a place that means something to me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I, I just have a soft spot in my heart for it. Yeah, I feel you, man. Damn. Okay, I mean, it's the first place you started, and then Estonia, and so Estonia's your first place. What's your second favorite? The performing, mm-hmm. or headlining, <sighs> yeah. Um, Germany, Germany, okay, yeah. Any spot, any cities in particular that comes out to you? Um, that's hard. I mean, Berlin, you, I mean, you know, yeah, Berlin, Berlin's pretty Berlin's dope. got a good scene. And He's and probably there when it's just was starting, too. So you probably got in, like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it was already pretty popping when I was when I was there. You know, it was the first city when I was like, you could go up every single night of the week in mm-hmm. Berlin. So I was thinking like, okay, if if I may, I moved out to Europe, like I would want to be in Berlin because obviously it, it is, you know, the scene is such that I can, if there's enough going on, I can get up every night. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, uh, I've had good experiences there. I have good relationships with the comics there. The shows I've done have been always, you know, a good time. It's like metropolitan. So you get mixtures of different people. It's not just Germans, but you also get like, expats you get people from other countries coming through watching shows yeah. so yeah it, it really feels like it feels like you're doing um a show in like new york or chicago or you know a, an american city mm-hmm. yeah yeah for a fact yeah i mean to yeah i agree perfectly that berlin is a place where you just see everyone come together you see people from new york from these places other places midwest west coast you're like damn everyone's out here this is crazy yeah so you live in Chicago now, right? That's where you at at the moment. Mm-hmm. And how how has it been? Because I always interesting on how people have been out in Europe for a while. I don't know if you ever. Yeah, you. I mean, you live there, but you're stationed there, but in, yeah. in Romania. But how has it been just with the transition between going to America and back to Europe and America and Europe? How has that been for you? Like, yeah. Um. I mean, it's like a second home in some pl- in some respects. You know, when I'm in the United States, I'm always like making plans of coming back here. 
um, you know, for a while there, I was dating a, a, a Finnish girl, mm. you know, and so a lo- I was spending a lot of time between here or between um, United States and Finland, um, you know, so, you know, at one point I was spending half my time in Europe, not necessarily for comedy, but, you know, I was still, you know, back and forth between here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for comedy, you know, I'm I'm. I'm touring. I don't really tour in the United States, you know. Mm. I mean, I perform in like we're around Chicago and whatnot. And if people want to pay me to go someplace, I'll do it. But like, if we're talking like putting together a long, multi-week, multi-month tour. That's why I, I've come to Europe and do that, mm. you know, because I for not a number of different reasons. One, I was like, I feel like it's a little easier to get around, just like using public transportation in Europe. And also, like, it sounds more impressive. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Better than going to uh, Wisconsin or something for, or, like, you know, somewhere in Tennessee for the weekend. Yeah, if I'm doing, no one gives a shit if I'm in Peking, Illinois for the weekend. But if I'm oh, in Kaiserslautern, no. Germany, people are like, oh, shit, what? I'm yeah, like, like, oh, wow. Yeah, you're in German, Kaiserslautern. What's that like? Yeah, like, it's no like one, the Kaiser. Is that king or something? Yeah, What's going on? No one gives a fuck about Peking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's even a real place. <laughs> It is. It's the most racist town in Illinois. Oh, shit. Okay, well then, yeah, definitely no one will be impressed. What would be impressed that you made it out alive? And I'm like, what? You, you alive, bro? You sure you're not a ghost? Like, <laughs> you sure you're not an apparition just talking? That's crazy. Okay, so damn, so you did most of your touring in Europe. Yeah. Damn, bro. And that must be crazy to come back and do comedy in the States because it's like Europe, I feel like you perform out here is different every time. Because, per- you know, you got also people who will are European from other European countries who have their own way of life that come to these places. Your comedy may be received differently, but in America it's like the threshold for comedy is at a different level Mm because people are aware of like, you know, set up punchline and TV and stuff. How has the comedy been for you when you perform between like United States, Europe, you know, countries in Europe? Yeah. You gotta, um, I mean, you gotta be open for, to, to receive different things, you know? So like I said, Berlin is very much like you could show up there day one and like most comedians I feel like can do rather well. Mm. Like you don't have to change too, too much. Like people will mostly be able to, you know, understand your references, et cetera. Same thing with like Estonia. Um, Now, if you go out to say Croatia or you do a show in Moldova, you know, their level of English is not going to be as, you know, as high as the average, you know, Estonian or German or whoever. So there are some things you have to alter. You have to change from place to place and you just kind of have to feel it out. Sometimes, you know, you're going to have a crowd where you got to, you got to slow the fuck down. Mm -hmm. You can't like be throwing out a bunch of shit. And so I do like comb through my material and try to like replace or remove, um, you know, like uh, uh, United States specific references or if I have them and it's like integral to the joke, then I got to take a moment to explain it and put it in terms mm. that they'll understand. So it does. And that way it kind of is like helpful for, especially if like you're trying to go on the road in the U S mm-hmm. and make you look at your stuff through a microscope and say, okay, this is too specific to the region I'm in. Like I know me like being in Chicago, um, I see a lot of comedians who will just struggle if they have a show in Indiana. You know, if they're just going 30 minutes east. Yeah. And now they're having to tell jokes to people who didn't grow up in the city, you know, who don't ride the the train every day or the bus every day. These people drive everywhere they go. Right. You know, so you got to you have to, like, adjust your material accordingly or at least like have material that you can give to them that they're going to understand or explain your material in a way that they will get it. So that helps out a lot. And like then when you come back to the United States, you do have material. And I'm not trying to say like you need to be generic. I'm just saying you got to meet people where they're at. Right. You know, and bring them on board and, and get them to understand you um, and and recognize when you're getting too specific. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah. Because even with doing comedy, starting out in New York City, going to other places, it was already like a tough switch, you know. Mm-hmm. And then I guess when you perform in Europe, as you say, that you have to really put yourself through put your jokes in a, through a microscope and like 
see, all right, where does this work here? Yeah. Is that, am I even explaining this right? Does it make sense <laughs> on its own? You know? Yeah. You yeah. talking about something in New York City, but oh yeah, I get it. You know, somebody in Estonia, they'd be like, what is up? What you talking about the sandwich? <laughs> that actually happened. I was like, oh wow. So I had to sit down and actually explain. It's like, oh, underground train. This train's underground. Like, why? So how does it work with the tr- underground mm-hmm. train? I was like, well, I gotta really explain. I got to break down what a subway is. I never, <laughs> you know, I was like beside my, I was like, oh, okay. I really took this for granted. But sometimes it like, it surprises me and like the stuff that they will get, you know, cause they do uh, like understand our, like uh, uh, our major references when it comes to like pop culture, mm-hmm. they know Taylor Swift, they know Justin Bieber, they know Drake, they know these people, mm-hmm. you know, uh, they know our politics. They know Trump, they know Biden, they know, you know, all these people. So like you don't have to break down that that type of stuff too too much for them because they get it mm-hmm. they understand it um, but those like you know region specific things they you do have to kind of come like take a step back a little bit mm. and it might not be immediately av- like a- apparent they might not laugh at har- as hard at what you're saying because they just they just don't get it right yeah yeah you kind of have to be mindful of that because that's always a mind fuck kind of a like. You know, you say something that you thought everyone would get, and then they'd be like, "Huh?" And you'd be like, yeah. "Oh, damn! This is okay. <laughs> this is I gotta really I don't know where to start <laughs> to break it down in my set. You know, in terms mm-hmm. of what this reference is. Hmm. So, um, you you go you about to go on tour. You know, um, soon like in the next couple of weeks actually. Yeah. And what is some of your ways of preparing yourself to get on like to go on this massive tour, this European tour, by the way? That yeah. You're going through. Well, right now there's a whole like different beasts for me because this is the longest tour I'm doing. And also, um, this tour is like the first one where I'm doing like, well, let me say, let me back up. Um, I'm doing a lot of different like deals in terms of like, I'm working some places I'm working directly with producers, some places I'm working directly with the venues and I'm got, I've got to, I'm getting door deals. So I've got to sell like tickets and whatnot. So I've got to have a, like a solid, marketing plan in place i have to some places i'm having openers come in from the united states and i've got to coordinate with them and make sure that they're good wow. and then i got i'm handling all my like logistics in terms of my my travel my accommodations all that stuff and that's honestly like the last shit i've been like, out. bro that's a lot yeah i get the i mean if when it comes to flights i don't fuck around with flights i will find the flights i'm gonna take but like stuff where it's like okay i need to get a bus from i don't know uh budapest to warsaw and I'm like, okay, that's something I can figure out the week of. I don't need to put my mental energy to that just yet. Mm. I need to focus on actually how am I going to get asses in seats. So I need to like have a whole promotional plan in place. I need to make up graphics. I need to have a plan of when I'm going to take out ads, who I'm going to market to, like when am I going to uh, create these ticket links and events, and how am I going to interact with the venue and get them on board and make sure that everything is falling into place? So it's a lot of logistics planning, and that's probably like the biggest difference between this and other tours that I've done. Yeah, bro. I mean, that sounds like a real full time job, as it should, because it's like a big deal. Yeah. And you know, I would imagine just with juggling that plus your actual material, what you plan on, you know, I mean, you've been performing it, but I'm assuming you got new stuff or things you want to work on mm-hmm. or add into this new uh, tour. And then also to the venues. I mean, just I, I didn't even think about the whole different structures. Cause each country or venue has their own structure and their own people and stuff you have to yeah. deal with. So that's a and, and navigating. Yeah. How am I going to get paid? Because they're like, hey, we want you to invoice us. Also, you need we you can't use like an American bank account. So uh, you get we're going to pay you with euros or we're playing you with Swiss francs or whatever. And so oh. then you got to like <laughs> look into like okay. Like what, uh, how, who, who can I go through to like, you know, get paid and how can I work around this? And then, you know, all about like VAT and stuff like that Damn, and tax bro. rules and stuff like, yeah, this is the stuff you got to think through. Cause like the last thing you want is to like set up a ticket link and then nobody can buy your tickets or you can't get paid out cause you don't have anywhere for the money to go. Bro, that's. Yeah, that's different, yo. You got to be like a fucking financier on yeah. the side with this comedy tour, too. Hey, sh- don't work out. I could be an agent or a manager at this point. I mean, I'm like, I yeah. put it together. I know what I'm, I'm or I'm, I'm figuring it out. And look, you got to give yourself some space to be like, hey, some stuff's going to fall through. Mm. You know, I, I have already, like I told you before earlier, like I have mentally prepared myself for the idea that 5% of my shows are going to be dog shit. 
five percent are going to be absolutely amazing. Yeah, and everything else is going to fall in the middle. I'm mm. going to miss some buses. I'm going to miss some trains. Right. I'm going to like shit's going to get canceled. The venue is going to burn down. Who the fuck knows? But <laughs> something's going to go wrong. Right. And you just have to have that like mental space to be like, accept it. It is what it is. Move on. That's a good mindset to have in terms. I, I like that you shared that because I think when setting up something this intricate, you always want things to work as expected as you plan. And, some, you know, naturally things are going to mess up. It's going to be rain, bus might break down, plane delays, strike, as you mentioned. Yeah. So that is, yeah, bro. I mean, you should write like a, a, a how to. <laughs> For real, bro. Like, just write that down, structure it, and be like, yo, here's the things you need. Here's the checklist or things you got to account for in doing a tour because even I think about it and then when I be here because you know I'm thinking about eventually doing that since I'm out here right mm -hmm. but then when I hear people's process I'd be like oh this is a different level this ain't no like oh you know here's a fun place and no oh, yeah. you know they like English <laughs> comedy and let's see what happens it's like no nah, well, you, you know this is, Rome wasn't built in a day and I didn't book a 50 plus show tour in, uh, overnight you know what I mean like mm. I started with you know, doing just uh, eight to ten shows, and I was co-headlining, and I wasn't doing door deals back then. I was just, like, slotting myself into an already existing show. Mm. So I was handling, like, that was very basic, and I'm like, let me get the lay of the land. Let me understand what I'm working with here. Let me do this in a simple way that I feel like is digestible at the time. And did I lose money on that tour? Yeah, I lost money on that tour. Mm -hmm. I didn't lose that much money, which is good. That's good. But then I came back the next year, or uh, yeah, I came back the next year and I made money. Oh. And then I was headlining, solo headlining. So I'm like, okay, I can do this. I know what I'm doing now. I'm, or at least I'm, I'm, I know more than I did last year. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I still made mistakes. I still fucked some, some stuff up. But now I know more and then right. I can keep building on pawn that and I'm going to make mistakes this next time, too. And I'm going to have a show where I where I sell 10 tickets out of 100 or oh, something. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. And I've been there before in the last one and it sucks as a, like feeling that. But at the same time, I'm like, yo, these 10 people showed up. I'm going to give them a show. That's a good mindset to have, bro. That's yeah. a good mindset. So if one would want if one would like to start touring. What would be what would you say would be the steps in order to kind of get to this place where you can start doing your own tour, like say in a couple countries in mm -hmm. Europe, like if you used to say, yeah, first off, be funny. <laughs> 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 Let's start there first and foremost. Don't come out here giving Americans a bad a bad reputation. Oh, that's a good one. We'll be coming out here and be bombing their ass off with that American and pride. They, they didn't get angry at him. Like, why aren't you laughing at this? This shit's yeah. funny. You it's Europeans, I mean, you be saying shit like, fucking kills in Harlem. Like, you ain't in Harlem. You went. Yeah. You are in. You are in the Netherlands, Harlem. All right. Uh, you are in the original Harlem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like yo, we've been there, done that. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're over this. We're advanced now. You guys still on the old arm? But for real, like, actually, like, do an honest assessment of your material. And for my openers this year, so I put it out there because I've wanted to bring people out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that was always my goal to, like, get people opportunities to come out here. Mm -hmm. um, and I told them I, I've set up, like, a whole Google form because I'm like, all right, here's your criteria of what you need to have in order to open. All right. Wow. You need 30 minutes, 30 good minutes. You're only going to do 15, but you need 30 because you're going to go through your material and you're like, fuck, I can't use this. I can't use this. I can't use this. I can't use this. You're going to that's going to happen. So you're going to run out of material real quick. Right. So I need you to have 30, but you're only going to do 15. That's a good one right there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the first one. Um, and then, you know, um, ask, ask around, man. Ask other people for advice because. You know, what you'll find out here is that people are not as people are. Uh, there are not as many people who are like people want to help you. You know, if you're a good person and you try to like go out of your way and like be gracious, be kind to other people, be respectful. People are willing to help you and go to bat for you. So even mm. if like, you know, I know people who I've hit up and I couldn't do their show for whatever reason. Like it just fell through. But they're like, hey, where else are you going? And I'm like, oh, I want to go here, here, here. Like, cool. Here's who here's who you hit up here. Here's who you hit up here. Here's who you hit up here. This person runs a show on this day, this day, this day. They will help you out and they will put you in touch with people who can who can help you. Mm -hmm. So um, leverage those connections. So make those connections and leverage them because the people on the ground here 
want to see you succeed. That's a good, yeah, that's a good point right there. Yeah. And I think that's a good thing you mentioned of how people are helpful out here mm-hmm. in Europe in comparison to other places where they may be as, ga- you know, more gatekeepy or yeah. something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, like I said, just be a good person and help others out. And don't be afraid to, like, try new shit and go new places because, like, Every time I talk about Europe with like people back in the United States, they always think of going to UK, going to uh, Paris or, or France, going to Spain or Italy. I'm like, get the fuck out of Western Europe. Get out of there because you first off, one, you're either in a place where there's already oversaturation of English speaking comedians because everybody from London and everybody from the UK is going there already in Australia and all the other English speaking countries. Uh, to any place that had colonies, they don't want to hear con- uh, uh, comedy in English. <laughs> Facts, <laughs> yeah. So you go on to go to Italy, you want to go to France, you want to go uh, to Spain, they want to hear comedy in French and Italian and Spanish. So you may be like, oh, okay, I can get on to some English shows in, 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 in uh, uh, Barcelona or um, Madrid or somewhere. I'm like, okay, cool. There's like two or three of those. Whereas if you go out to... Germany, you go out to Berlin. It's a lot going on. It's a lot going a lot on going in on. English. Yeah. And a lot of the countries, especially further out east and in like Central Europe and Eastern Europe, a lot of the natives there start performing comedy in English. So some people I know have only ever done comedy in English, even though their native language is Czech or, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. So th- there are opportunities further out off the beaten path you just have to have a little bit of like courage to actually put yourself out there Mm -hmm. that's a good point bro that's a good point so one thing i like to ask before um we end the podcast or episode is you've been through a lot of different cultures you've been a lot of different experiences i mean you know you started from romania you went to moldova you did comedy in estonia all these places you probably do a 52 country uh, uh, 20 something country, like a little over 20 and like uh, 50, 54 shows, 54 shows. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 54 shows. Yeah. Um, what is some advice you give to like, say your younger self in this time of like, you know, uh, going to different European countries, doing comedy in these countries. Um, what is, is some advice you give to like your younger self? Um, so advice I give to my younger self is, um, I don't know if there's anything I would do differently. I would just probably say, like, enjoy it, you know, because, like, um, you know, the last time I was on a long tour was in 2019, mm. you know, and then I had planned to do a long one again in 2020, and then obviously 2020 happened, you know, and so um, I felt really, uh, I was really, like, you know, frustrated over the fact that I couldn't get out and do, mm. you know, comedy in other countries. So a lot of these places I'm going, this is the first time I've been there, like, five years so um i would just say yeah appreciate it like take it in love it like you know and also stay present because when you're on tour you know you get a lot into the the the, um what i found the last time i was on a long tour was i was doing like a lot of one-nighters every day for like like weeks a week straight and so i would get burned out you know Cause it's the same process of like, wake up early, go to the train station, bus station, take a bus train five hours, six hours, who, what, whatever, check into the hotel or hostel or whatever, grab a quick bite to eat, maybe take a nap, go to the venue, do the show, have maybe a beer afterwards, go to the hostel, sleep, do it all over again. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's it. That's a there's a degree of that, that I'm going to do on this one too. But I would say like, stay present on stage. Don't just get into the, you know, just doing the motions of all that of the routine because the audience is going to see through that mm-hmm. and you're, it's not going to go the way you want it to stay present. Do shit. Do crowd work. Just enjoy it. You know, so, yeah, that's a good that's a good advice, man, especially like going through the motions because, yeah, you, I mean, traveling a lot. So. Um, hopefully people find this very dope or very uh, insightful. I mean, because you've you know you you're a black dude who went to the east uh, part of, of Europe and survived, <laughs> and I uh, still have a smile. <laughs> so nothing too negative. I mean, it's a bit some negative, but not. It's old. not as it's not as scary as people make it out to be. It's honestly not. It, like it, 
I know it's like, oh, the, the, it's not as many black people out there, et cetera, et cetera. Like, you're going to be all right. Yeah, and there be black people out there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they do. Yeah. In Berlin, I do about 10 head nods every day. So that was uh, that was higher than I expected. Yeah. I don't think I even did that much. I mean, you're going to see different black people. You're going to see, like, I was in, like, was, I was in Finland, saw a lot of Somalis. Yeah. So you see a lot of, you see a lot of Eastern Africans, East Africans and, you know, whatnot. So, hey, you're going to see other people of your skin color and complexion and whatnot. I mean, they may they got a different shaped head, but, you know, <laughs> their hairline might be a little, little askew, but. <laughs> askew? <laughs> Y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about. Damn, Shut up. Lions and dog. That shit. You. <laughs> oh, that's a different rose. I never heard a skewed hairline. <laughs> Damn, yo, that shit was a fuck. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's use a butter knife for that shit. <laughs> God damn. Uh, Somali people, you guys are always loved on yep. the podcast. Uh, good food, and uh, I like the movies. All right, guys. Uh, so, yeah, thank you very much for doing this, bro. Yeah, it means a lot. It. And, guys, thank you very much for listening or watching. This is Third Call to Talk podcast, and your boy, Nyan Yenifin. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.